Well, today I have this Vox AC uh, 15 C2, and um, it's my son's amp. And what he's saying is that when he's playing it, it goes for a while, 15, 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden the, uh, the volume really starts degrading. And it's almost like he's turning down the volume knob on his guitar is what he's reporting to me. So I think what I'm going to do is it's I have all the settings that he's used to playing at. <clears throat> I'm going to hook up a dummy load to it and put it on the scope and just run it for a while and see if what the scope is outputting uh, shows uh, what he's reporting. And um, so if I can get it repeatable, then I think I can fix it. Uh, having a problem that our output is really, uh, we don't have very much output. And um, <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do is kind of trace where we're losing that output <clears throat> and uh, figure out why. So I'm just going to start tracing my way through the circuit. And I think I found this nice set of plans here for a um, AC15C1 and I think the only difference is the number of speakers <clears throat> I think and um, so that's what I'm going to start doing and I'm going to start tracing the normal line here so this is all normal line goes through uh, half of a 12AX7 for amplification and then comes into a, a little op amp here. And I think this op amp is just for mixing if you want to do both normal and top boost. And what top boost does is it comes through, it takes the other half of that 12AX7 for amplification, then comes through a 12AX7 and has a second uh, preamp uh, with some tone control on it. And then comes into that same mixer. And from that mixer, then goes into the amp section right here. <clears throat> and the amp section comes in and takes input uh, yeah B is coming from the reverb and then A comes in, comes in here just looks like it does a little bit of amplification and then comes into a phase inverter and then from a phase inverter um, has a tone knob and a master volume it looks like it just shorts out. This is one phase. This is one phase. This is the other phase. And one phase comes into here. And then the offset phase comes into here. These power tubes here. And so we're just going to trace this through and see if we can figure out um, where we're losing stuff. And so I have uh, 8 ohm dummy load hooked up to the speaker. And then I just have my signal generator putting out uh, 400 millivolts peak to peak at one kilohertz and um, so we're just going to turn up our no normal volume and uh, oops turn it on and it's working perfect <laughs> the preamp I'm just going to follow it into this first 12AX7 and um, if I look at the normal volume we should see that signal coming through um, right here after it comes through the uh, first half of that preamp. So let me get my scope probe. Nope, that's not it. Okay, so we're already amplified to almost 4 volts, and if I turn... 
I go to uh, so we have 2.75 coming in and then 2.75 going out if you have it cranked all the way up <clears throat> so we're just going to put that right at about right around two and then our next stop so I think that's working pretty good so far then we come into UI or U1A this op amp and so if we look at that okay so if I look at that op amp at the signal coming out of it that's right around 3.7 volts and so there is some gain coming out of this coming to the main amp so then if we look at the main amp the main amp right here we're coming into U5A and let's see what we have coming out of U5A okay so this is a high power or high voltage op amp and the output then is 3.79 uh, so we have some <coughs> amplification there and then if I look at my circuit we have um, that signal coming through here into the grid of uh, V3A which is the phase uh, phase inverter and um, so we should be able to look at the tone cut knob and see a nice big signal coming out of that so if we look at well that's interesting Okay, so I'm going to take a look right here and here, um, which should be right before we get into this stage right here. And um, we can do that by looking at these two res the two resistors here. If I look right here. And right here, and get my scope probes. And they both look pretty good. So that's showing the one of those waves is going to go into one of the amplifier tubes or power amp tubes and the other one's going to go into the other tube and then they're going to work together to power this thing so I don't know I'm going to keep looking so far so good so everything is checked out so far pretty well and it's still not working so I'm thinking that one of these tubes is bad now before I check the bias using the cathode, check the cathode bias by checking this cathode resistor here, and it didn't seem that far off. But I think if one of these tubes is bad, our bias should be off uh, individually, and maybe this is average, checking here is averaging them. So what I'm going to do, um, uh, use a method that uh, I saw on Uncle Doug, Uncle Doug's YouTube page, is that check the resistance from here to here and then check the voltage drop from here to here and then check the voltage here and then use a formula to check the bias here and then also check it here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the voltage drop uh, across the transformer winding from B plus 
to the plate and so that the B plus is this red wire here so if I put my probe right there and I check pin 7 get a voltage drop of 28 ohms and then I check the other one and I, I've already written these down but then here we got 29.2 okay so keep track of those two numbers and I'm gonna switch it on and let it warm up So then I'm going to check my B plus voltage. Three fifty four point seven. And then I'm going to check the voltage drop across B plus to pin 7 of the tubes. And the first one is about 1.95 volts and the second one is <laughs> look at that there's nothing going through there 0 0.001 so there's pretty clearly a problem there. So I put together this spreadsheet and here we can see the, the tube on the left is 28, um, 28 volts voltage drop between the transformer center tap, which goes to B plus, and the plate. So that's 28 volts, the other one's 29.1. Voltage drop across those when the amp's running, 1.95, 0 .001. Uh, then we figure out what the plate current is by dividing V by R. That gives us these values, and then we figure out the plate voltage, or we get the plate voltage, and that gives us for plate dissipation or watts, we have the uh, plate voltage times the plate current, and here we have 24 watts, and uh, no watts at all there, and um, so I think there's a too bad. Okay, so now I just switched the tubes, and I'm going to check the um, voltage drop across them. Yep, so it's completely swapped. So I'm going to put in some new tubes and we'll see what that does. Alright, so I have my new tubes in, so let me check the voltage drop across. Okay, 1.23 and 1.23. So we're seeing about 15 watts of plate dissipation uh, per side. And uh, boy, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hook it up to a dummy load and see if that fixed the problem. Okay, so we have our uh, dummy load hooked up. I have the scope hooked up to the output, and then I have my uh, signal generator putting out putting out one kilohertz. And I'm going to turn the preamp down, and then get my standby. Oh, it's beautiful! And let's see what it... So, 9.85 volts peak RMS. 
Uh, let me turn this up a little bit. And we got 10.7. 10 10.8. Okay, let me turn it down. Fourteen point five. That looks like fifteen watts to me. So, so I just took the uh, ten point eight times ten point eight divided by the eight ohms that I'm putting it into, and I got fourteen point five watts. So that's looking pretty good. I think I think bad tubes were the problem, and um, I found it kind of interesting to kind of go through the circuit and look at it. I hope you find it interesting too. Uh, please remember to subscribe if you find this interesting. And uh, thanks for watching.